In a six to three decision, the United States Supreme Court has just ruled that hundreds of January 6 rioters were improperly charged with the obstruction of official proceeding statute, upending many cases stemming from the Capitol attack and potentially impacting Donald Trump's criminal case in Washington, D.C., because two of the charges of the four charges there also involve the obstruction of an official proceeding count. I want to explain in a little bit, though, why I think even with this Supreme Court ruling, the obstruction of official proceeding counts against Donald Trump will still stick. But I think it will be made a little bit more complicated by what the United States Supreme Court did. Let's break it down. It was actually an interesting dynamic of who was part of the group of six and who was part of the group of three. In the group of six who made this decision, it was written by Justice John Roberts and uh, joined by Justice Thomas, Alito, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson, who of course was appointed by President Biden. I'll explain to you in a little bit why Justice Jackson ruled with the majority in this opinion. Um, then there was in the dissent, the dissent was written by Amy Coney Barrett, the Trump appointee, uh, and joined by Justice Sotomayor and Justice Kagan. So that was the dynamic of the six to three decision here. If you take a look at the statute at issue, obstruction of official proceeding, it's found in 18 U.S. Code Section 1512, tampering with a witness, victim, or an informant. It was passed as part of the Sarbanes-Oxley legislation in 2002 in connection with the Enron cases and the criminality there too. And when you go to 18 U.S. Code Section 1512C, it says the following, and this is ultimately what the January 6th insurrectionists were charged with, um, in addition to other charges, as well as what Donald Trump was charged with in two counts. It says the following, whoever corruptly, one, alters, destroys, mutilates, or conceals a record, document, or other object, or attempts to do so with the intent to impair the object's integrity, or availability for use in an official proceeding, or two, otherwise obstructs, influences, or impedes any official proceeding or attempts to do so, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 20 years or both. And so what the January 6th insurrectionists were charged with is 18 U.S.C. section 1512C sub 2, that they otherwise obstructed, influenced, or impeded any official proceeding or attempted to do so. And many of these insurrectionists were then charged with this, and it carried with it up to a 20-year prison sentence. That's what happened to the individual who brought this appeal up to the Supreme Court, uh, Fisher, who was a violent insurrectionist, who in addition to uh, the various other charges he was charged with, he was charged with this, a very potent tool by the Department of Justice. Now, in the initial federal proceeding, uh, the case was dismissed by a Trump-appointed judge, Judge Nichols, who basically said, you have to read the subsections one and subsection and the subsection two together, and that subsection two, even though it says, otherwise obstructs, influences, or impedes any official proceeding, that is actually still connected to C sub one about altering, destroying, mutilating, or concealing a record, document, or other object. So if it doesn't relate to mutilating, concealing, destroying, altering, record, document, um, or other object, uh, subsection C2 doesn't just have this broad meaning about any other form of obstructive conduct. It has to deal with uh, documents, records, or other objects. So the case was actually dismissed as it relates to the obstruction of official proceeding counts at the trial court. It was then appealed to the Washington, D.C. Court of Appeals, which in a split decision, a two to one, um, actually found that the charges were appropriate 
that section C2 says what C2 means. Any other obstructive con conduct that impedes any official proceeding. Then it was appealed to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court in the ruling um, by uh, written by Justice Roberts says the following. And he agreed with basically what the trial court said, that it has to relate to documents. It has to relate to records. And it says the following. To prove a violation of Section 1512 C2, the government must establish that the defendant, the criminal defendant, impaired the availability or integrity for use in an official proceeding of records, documents, objects, or as we earlier explained, other things used in the proceeding or attempted to do so. So the judgment of the DC circuit is therefore vacated, it's reversed, and the case is remanded for further proceedings consistent with this opinion. On remand, the DC circuit may assess the sufficiency of count three of Fisher's indictment in light of our interpretation of 1512C2, meaning it still has to be connected now to the integrity, the availability, um, or the use in an official proceeding records, documents, or objects. So if you can prove that, you can still have this charge. Um, and that's why earlier in the video where I said, as it relates to Donald Trump, I don't think that this decision by the United States Supreme Court will automatically have the effect of dismissing the two charges brought against Donald Trump under 18 U.S.C. 1512 C2, because a lot of Donald Trump's conduct did involve under this language right here, the availability or integrity for use in an official proceeding, records, objects, and documents. They submitted fake electors. They manipulated documents. Donald Trump submitted false declarations. And so um, that's why I think ultimately this doesn't impact uh, the charges against Donald Trump. But I think it could, it could definitely add layers of complexity. Donald Trump is definitely going to file a motion to dismiss those two charges in the indictment based on this ruling. It will cause further delay and there will have to be significant litigation now uh, over those issues. As it relates to these hundreds of other January 6th insurrectionists, those charges could be dismissed um, as well because a lot of those charges do not involve any documents or the integrity of records. It just involves people who showed up uh, at the Capitol building uh, and were attacking the Capitol building, but not specifically um, uh, doing the attacks on records or focused on any specific document per se. Now, there's still other charges brought against them, so it's not like they're going to go free, but this was one of the main charges that was uh, brought against them. And ultimately, if you go well, how did the majority even kind of find this? Isn't it so obvious, Ben? I mean, it says otherwise obstructs, influences, or impedes any official proceeding or attempts to do so. Aren't these right-wing conservative justices supposed to be strict textualists? Isn't that what it says? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the issue, and that's one of the things that Justice Amy Coney Barrett says in the dissent, that if we're textualists, read what the text says. It says otherwise obstructs, influences, or impedes, and that's what happened. And Congress may not have been able to delineate every specific example, but we know as a practical matter, Congress does, doesn't do that. That's not what they're able to do. But let's give the words the meaning um, that, they, uh, that, that they have here. Um, so what Justice Roberts said, though, is, look, look at the context of when this um, uh, law was passed. It was related to Enron, related to the Sarbanes-Oxley, related to document fraud concealment of records in connection with official proceedings to investigate Enron. And if we broaden this to every conceivable type of obstructive conduct with a 20 year prison sentence, that could impact the liberty of Americans. That's the generous interpretation of what Justice Roberts says. And going back to what I said at the beginning, why would a Biden appointee, Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson, who's been very focused on the liberty and the freedoms of Americans. Why would she join the right wing majority here? Well, in her concurrence, she says the following. She says that um, uh, other less rule of law administrations might be tempted to vindictively punish lawful, peaceful protest. Uh, she, our commitment to equal justice and the rule of law 
requires the courts to faithfully apply criminal laws as written, even in periods of national crisis. And then you go finally to the dissent, which is written by uh, Judge Coney Barrett. And she says in the dissent, um, look, if we're being strict textualists, take a look at what the words mean. Um, here's what the statute says. The statute says otherwise obstructs. And, and Congress clearly gave the directive that this could be a criminal charge used in this circumstance. So an interesting six to three uh, dynamic. But the main headline here is that uh, a lot of these obstruction of official proceeding charges that were brought against uh, January 6th insurrectionists are now going to be dismissed. There'll have to be new trials. The Department of Justice is going to be in a bit of chaos over this because they use this as a prosecute as a prosecutorial tool um, to seek justice against some uh, horrific conduct on January 6th. And you know, and that's where we're at today as it relates to Trump. Again, we'll have to you know see what happens with those two charges. It's not automatically dismissing those two charges based on the interpretation that I read for you. It just has to be clearly connected to the documents, but I think it will uh, cause delay. But a lot of J6ers are going to be set free now because of that and for their horrible conduct and as a result of this ruling. Um, so I think not a great day for, uh, for, for justice there, but I hope you appreciated the thorough breakdown. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subscribers uh, together. We will keep you posted and we'll be doing another uh, take on this and other cases with our uh, Supreme Court specialist, our law and politics correspondent, Mike Sachs. So check in for additional updates there. Thanks for watching. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.